Hey guys, Coach Scott Leon here. This is another edition of the Powerlifting for the People podcast. Uh, we got uh, Clinton on the line today. How are you doing today, my man? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well. Thanks for asking. So uh, for people that are listening, can you just uh, you fill them in a little bit, like who you are, like what, where you're from, and what you got going on right now? Hi, my name is Clinton Boone. I'm from Lindenhurst, New York. I'm currently working as a trainer at the UFC gym, training in jiu-jitsu and wrestling. I actually interned for John Galleon a while back while I was in college. Probably my favorite moment of college that I actually had. Awesome. And I learned a lot there along to what I'm doing right now. And I'm actually looking to moving forward into my personal training career. Very cool, man. So I appreciate it. So I want to definitely talk about like kind of how you got into fitness. I know, you know, obviously you're still involved with wrestling. I know that you were kind of wrestler growing up. So maybe you can talk about that a little bit, maybe some of the things that you learned and then kind of like how you stumbled across like our gym, uh, like once you kind of got into college. Sure. So when I was going to college, there was a program where they would let you do an internship based on whatever you wanted to follow through on. And I was sitting on my computer computer just looking for anywhere where I could intern for like personal training and the gym pops up on like a notification and then I clicked on it and I was thinking this gym was probably going to be far far away in Long Island and the address literally was a Farmingdale address and I was like I wasn't aware there was another gym around here so I clicked on it followed through I got to talk to you for a little bit and then I eventually got to meet you in person I do remember the first day walking in the room I was, I was slightly nervous because I wasn't knowing what I was going to expect or anything. Yeah. And then I walk in the room, I look up at the wall, and I see, like, a bunch of wrestling things. And I'm like, yeah, I'm where I need to be. Yeah. And for those that are kind of, like, listening that uh, maybe, uh, you know, haven't been following us for too long or whatever, you know, I've been, uh, you know, I, I was a wrestling coach for many years. Uh, middle, I was the middle school wrestling coach for Plain Edge for a number of years. I uh, did some kid wrestling. I worked with the varsity team for a while, did strength conditioning for a lot of wrestlers. And that was kind of like how I got my start. So, um, so I definitely, definitely have that in common. And I think, uh, there's a lot. So maybe if you could just talk about, um, uh, maybe like, uh, just talk about like your, what you kind of also learned with, uh, with wrestling. And then also, um, uh, what are some things that you, that kind of help, helped you like as far as when you were training with us and like, what are some things that maybe you're using right now, like with the kids, uh, that you're working with now? Right. So honestly, all my fitness goals have like tied into my wrestling stuff. But when I interned with you, I learned a lot more how to like actually lift weights the correct way because everyone thinks they do it the right way when they're first doing it. And then you kind of get a little mind blown as, oh, you're doing things wrong, such as some people will hold their breaths when they're lifting. And I still remember the first time I've ever seen that. And I had to address it with somebody. like, you never want to hold your breath when you're lifting weights. And then it's just a bunch of other stuff that I learned. The most important thing I learned from you was like my public speaking skills, which was like one of my weakest things that I had to work on. And thank God I had you guys to get me through that because that was like a huge weakness I always knew I had. I've gotten better at it now. Obviously, working with kids has really improved that. Sure. And honestly, I'm wrestle- wrestling has also, like, I feel like whenever I'm working out with somebody, I, like, include them in my family. And sometimes when I work out with people, I learn things through them that I didn't know. So it's kind of like a learning experience through both of us. Yeah. I definitely think there's a big uh, difference between, like, knowing how to, like, you know, demonstrate the exercises and then working with somebody one-on-one. And like you said, also, like, uh, the communication piece is big and also like when you're working with kids versus working with adults versus working with high school kids, you got to like kind of communicate and, and talk to them a certain way. So I know you're working with a lot of more like youth athletes, uh, and also doing kind of the skill work and things like that. So, uh, what are some things that you've had to kind of address and kind of had to, uh, I guess modify, like when you're communicating to the younger athletes, like how do you keep them engaged? Uh, how do you kind of keep them like interested and like, what are some kind of tips for people that maybe are working, whether it be, you know, the skill part or maybe they're doing some training with more like high school or middle school kids. Uh, what are some advice you can kind of give to those the things that have kind of helped you uh, in the past? Right. So I learned a long time ago that when you're training with kids compared to like high school athletes, the kids kind of want to play a little more rather than it being a learning thing. And the high schoolers are kind of more like learning and less play. 
So with the kids, you can't go too in depth of like trying to teach them the technique and everything because it's like they'll have a very short intention span. And that's not all kids because I've had like two kids that are literally almost like me and they're like mature than I was at their age and they'll literally like pick it up. But there are some kids that are just like they can't stay still in one place for one second. So you kind of have to like give them that time to play while also teaching them. It's different from like high schoolers because high schoolers is like a different mindset. You're like competing to be a champion or something. So you live with that and the little kids just really want to play. So basically what my job is with the little kids, it's just to let them have their time, let them enjoy the moment, let them learn things they're going through and kind of just prepare them for that next step. And what are some examples like as far as I'm sure you still want to get that you still want to get them to perform better. You still want them to improve their skills. Right. What are some uh, examples of maybe like some, I guess, ways that you kind of make it more fun or maybe some different games that you play? Because I think that's really important. And I think um, I'm even starting to see it in powerlifting now. I think a lot of these newer lifters are, um, I don't know if taking it too serious is the right word, but uh, they, there's the burnout rate and the turnover rate is much quicker. And I'm sure you probably see this with the youth athletes. It's like if you push them too hard – if you push them too hard too soon, uh, they may be doing really well at, at the elementary level, or the middle school level, but then they kind of burn out. They may end up quitting before they get to high school. Or they may. I see a lot of times, uh, even sometimes I'll see like a state. I've had like state champions I've worked with. They don't. They actually don't wrestle in college because they're so burnt out by the time they get to college. So, how do you kind of keep it fun and engage them? And like, what are some examples of maybe like how do you make it fun or some of the games that you kind of play with the kids? So one game that I've been playing, like, legitly, because one kid um, literally was like, is there any way I could, like, wear your purple belt? And I told him, like, (laughs) you're not going to wear my purple belt. And he's like, but what if I really want to? So I made a wager. I wrapped the belt in my pants, and I kind of, like, stuck it hanging out. I was like, if you can grab the belt from me, you can hold it. So basically when I do that, it's kind of, like – giving an idea of like hand fighting because if you don't use the proper hand fighting technique you're never gonna get the belt so the kid thought it was a good idea he's like oh i can just reach for it so he reached for it and then i arm dragged him and he's like what the heck i was like i never said you were gonna get it easily so basically the kid is like arm fighting with me and it took like a few weeks on the second week we're like going and going and then he like pegs me in the head because i'm like going down to him at his level he pegs me in the head, moves my head to the side, and then grabs the belt, and I was, like, the most satisfied person yeah. that day. That's awesome. Yeah, so, I mean, that's, like, a good example. Like, it's kind of, like, at the end of the day, it's, like, yeah, like, you, you make it fun for them, uh, and they still actually, they're learning the skills. They kind of, they learn to, like, kind of, like you said, hand fight and kind of get into the, the good positions. So, I think that that's that's a great example of something kind of silly. Uh, but the kid, obviously, the kid probably thought it was like so much fun, and then I'm sure he felt really, yeah. I'm sure he felt really good uh, after uh-huh. accomplishing that too. Um, right. So I know you talked about. So one of the things I think is uh, definitely challenging. Um, I know I do like a lot of, when I worked with the kids in the past. I would do either do a lot of like whistles starts or a lot of things like on a cadence to kind of maybe slow them down because a lot of times they can get really wild. Um, yeah. Do you have any like kind of tips like when you're teaching somebody? whether it be the fitness part of it or the skill part of it of like how to like kind of slow the kids down a little bit and make sure they're not like too out of control. Cause I think that's something we see a lot with the younger kids is they may be dropping down too fast or maybe they're doing a push up or something and they're kind of their bodies all over the place. Like how do you kind of give them a little bit more control of their body? Uh, like when you're teaching them like a new movement. So uh, a good example of when they're doing push ups, I will actually go down with them. And I will count it out. So I'll be like down. You tell them. And then yeah. I'll go up. And I'll say up. And we all do it at the same time. I don't want everyone doing it at their own yeah, pace. Because that's, that's exactly what happens. You'll have one kid who's doing it like perfect form. And then you'll have another kid who's not doing it the exact yeah. way. And if I see any little issues, I will pick like the kid that's the leader in the group. And have him go forward with the count. And the kid that's having the issues, I'll just kind of pull him aside and try to edit it while I'm doing that. While that's going on. Yeah, I think that's really good advice because I think that's something we kind of take for granted. You know, sometimes when we're working with like, um, you know, more mature athletes or athletes that have a little bit better like uh, body awareness or body control, I think setting a, ca- a cadence. And I also think from a te- for a team setting or if you're working with the group, uh, there's something about like having the athletes be in sync with each other. I think that's very powerful right. for the, the camaraderie and the team aspect of it. I think that's really important. And I think if you are 
on the personal training side of it or the fitness side of it, if you ever like were to, you know, run a boot camp class or like a large group like exercise class, I think you'd kind of do a similar thing and it kind of gets them motivated, it gets everyone's energy like in sync with each other and it kind of makes for a more fun uh, motivating workout and I think that it's definitely yeah, a, a great when I've done thing, so. classes before I've run into kids that will literally sit there and go to the class and like I'll have like late straddlers come in and there are kids that are like very good friends with each other and when that late straddler comes in the kids all happy and I was like so there's definitely like a team camaraderie going on between the group all right awesome man for the most part they all get along too so that's like really cool. good so uh I want to. Uh, I got a couple more questions for you. So one thing I know, because we kind of kind of glossed over some of the interning and, and stuff like that. Uh, what besides like the exercise technique uh, and like the public speaking? Were there any kind of big takeaways that you got from like training and interning with us? And what are some like the top things that you kind of learned along the way? And then is there anything that you kind of still like use like on a regular basis from like the warm ups or technique or cueing that you're still kind of using? Uh, to, or it could even be with your training yourself too. Right. So the warm-ups that we we do we did when I was interning, I still consistently use them now, and I try to make sure I do them at least every day, even if I'm not going to the gym, just to like build it into habit. Nice. The most important thing I took from that internship was the program design. I try to use I use it a lot now as like a format for me when I'm like training, and it's worked like wonders for me because I used to like just kind of go in the gym and do what I feel like doing, and that's not really the right exact way you want to do it. You kind of want to go in there with a game plan. That way you're able to get everything done on a consistent right time, and then you can move on. And it also allows you to check yourself as well as how you're doing. Very cool, my man. Um and then uh, if you have some, uh, I guess, advice for people that are maybe they want to they want to coach others that maybe they want to work with kids or work with athletes, uh, what are some like some advice that you can kind of give them for people that are kind of maybe starting out in the field? So my best advice is like my most important thing. You should always try to connect with someone who's doing it already. That way you have someone to like be a mentor to you or to get some insight of what you're going to. Another good piece of advice, this probably pertains to when you're looking like for a certification, you don't want to look for the cheapest certification. You want to look for like the most affordable certification you could possibly find and then work that way. Because even with a certification at the end of the day, and I probably might catch some heat for it, it's still just a piece of paper. You always have to make sure that even though you have that certification, it doesn't necessarily make you a good trainer. Yeah, I think that's a good point. Just because you get certified doesn't mean that you know everything already. You got to constantly be learning. Exactly. Uh, and I think like I'm I said, still learning. Yeah, I think and myself too. So I think uh, you always got to have like kind of that white belt mentality that you're always looking to get better. You're always looking to advance, uh, no matter how many years you're doing this. So I think that's great. Uh, so if yeah. people are like listening to this and maybe they're like local to Long Island, and they would maybe be interested in, in you know becoming a part of our gym or maybe interested in our doing our internship program, uh, what would you tell say to those people? I definitely say jump on that opportunity if you get it. It was a very incredible experience for me. I also remember I got to work out in that gym for a little bit while I was doing that. That was like a great thing because I wasn't really doing the weightlifting at the Farmingdale gym. Clinton's call got dropped, uh, but I still think there's a lot of great content in, in there, and hopefully uh, you guys got a lot out of it as well. Uh, so thank you guys for, for listening. If you guys got something out of the interview, uh, please give us a five-star review. It helps other people find us. If anyone's interested in interning at Gagley on Strength, you guys could shoot me an email to gagleyonstrength at gmail.com. Um, definitely, if you want to support the program, check out the links below. And thank you guys so much for watching. And until next time, stay strong, and we'll see you soon.